Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to pod number seven, Husker Hype Radio. I'm Eddie Rosenthal alongside virtually Aaron Warsfold. We're here. We're fired up. Another week, Aaron. What do you, uh, how, how was your week, man? We haven't, we haven't caught up. What, what, what'd you do? What'd you do this week? I've had an all right week, Ed. The saga of the marathon continues. I ran 10 miles on Saturday before the hog roast Memorial day weekend. That was super fun. And that was, a so that 10 miles was a part of like you, was that a, event or you just did it yourself Self inflicted yeah just, just then what's this hog roast you speak of uh so mckenzie my girlfriend her parents live in a little cul-de-sac tucked away neighborhood and they have the like a hog roast every memorial day it was lit right got on. all got all drunk a right good classic that. midwest fun everybody's that's outside an Iowa, right that's, that's an Iowa. Iowa. Yeah. but but golly i should put up a fucking picture of kelly's kelly's garage because that's that's the one with all the Husker shit around it. Yeah, that thing's a freaking man cave, dude. Yeah. That's You'd pretty no sick. Idea. You'd have no idea his house was in the middle of Iowa with just the amount of Nebraska memorabilia he's got in there. God, that's that's a dream of mine. Maybe we could uh, some someday do a Husker Hype Radio podcast and they just have a sick fucking backdrop. Yes. And then get get all the Iowa's Iowans for Nebraska to, you know, be in the background. That's what I really want to do for Husker Hype Radio one uh one of these games is just have like a party going on in the back. And then I tell them, you know, shut the fuck up and or not shut the fuck up, but like be outside or something. Well, and then when it's a touchdown and then we come in and it's just insane, massive. Everybody's taking fireball shots. It's a fucking rave for like two minutes. Right. The good thing now is you got the mic too, so like hopefully it'll only pick up your voice most of the time compared to True. before when it was on like our phone or something. True. So, question for you: When you're in Iowa, Iowa City, visiting Mackenzie, do you kind of feel like when you go in there, you're like, "Oh, I'm a fu- I'm I'm a Husker in in wrong territory." Enemy territory. Yes, hundred yeah. percent. I'll go to the I'll go to the CWRC like the campus weight room and i'll wear a fucking nebraska hat and i'll be like who's trying to say something to me bud somebody say something to me please 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 come at me i'll spit facts at you where the you see the banners in the weight room any of them say football national championships oh no and then what about big 10 too no none of those like i think we have like 26 conference championships back home and and five five national yeah it's five national championship banners and then i just don't see any around here for you guys that's weird right right you should start planting like flags on the fucking campus dude you should start marking territory you do it with your p already but you should like plant some like legit fucking you know, sp- like little sp- sp- can and just tag ends in the grass on campus maybe something a little more like practical where i'm not i couldn't get in trouble or get couldn't get like yeah. a podcast band <laughs> get like those little sprinkler flags you know people have it's like yes sprinkler company but just have like nebraska stats and just start putting them around the stadium and like around the campus and shit that'd be lit yeah dude and then that the reddit the reddit forum or twitter or whatever they'll be like who's putting these on our lawn and shit and you go right. it's me bitch tag me or it's like me. those stickers are fun the people that have those stickers everywhere and they like you see certain brands or people that that's a thing where you put stickers crazy places and then you take pictures of where they're at and you're like whoa it's crazy mm-hmm so maybe we, that's a thing that we need to get some of those printed and and just hand them out to right. you know maybe if when they purchase a t-shirt hand out a sticker in there tag us put it somewhere cool husker hype radio all around the world the boys in italy can slap theirs on the fucking on the vatican or something yes <laughs> so the boys in italy are going to put it on like their track suit like one of their track suits or something and be yes that would be sick husker that'd hype radio in yeah. Italy, yes, hell yeah. What about you, Ed? What the fuck happened this week, dude? I had a stellar weekend. Um, what happened? I I woke up. I forgot what I did the night before. Not because I was like, I just I don't really remember. 
Um, and then uh, woke up and Cade goes, oh, yeah, Eddie, what are you doing this weekend, man? I go, you know, nothing, just chilling. Hey, you want to go to Havasu? Uh, yeah. Are you kidding me? He goes, okay, we're leaving in an hour. Get your things ready. Pack my bags. We go to Havasu. And Lake Havasu is just a, is just an excellent time, dude. It's a lake out in Arizona, if you guys don't know about it. And there's, it's freaking hot as balls there, but, but the water's nice. Kate's family, they got a boat. There's always like, you know, some other families that are there too. And everybody just kind of picks a party cove, hangs out, chills, drinks a lot of beer. And it's a classic American oh, Memorial Day weekend. Hell yeah. Memorial Day on the water, man. Right. How many, what was like the best part? How many hot babes? Any, any nice mullets out there on the water? You see any guys with some nice hairdos? We were kind of, the uh, Cades is a little bit south of like the city. So we were kind of just hanging out like with the families that, you know, Cade, Cade the Pentagraph family knows. But it was still fun, dude. We, we were just do, driving around the boat. We went up to the channel at one time. And we like went through the channel where like everybody's at, you know, and that was pretty crazy. I saw some pasties, some big, some big boobs, some chicks going wild. Yeah. It was just like, eh. and then Fun. you got, and then you were like, I got to jump in the water because my cock's getting all hard. Right. And then I had my, uh, my Jito <laughs> on. I have a jean Speedo that I love to, that I love to wear and, and people got a kick out of that. So that's always fun, um, but that that'd be a great place to uh, put put some Huskrab radio stickers on as well. You know what what like? Do you feel confident when you wear a a speedo, a denim speedo? Dude, I give no fucks now. I I, I at first, you know, it's yeah. It's what's just the first time like, like? What was the first time like? The first time I I did feel a little odd, you know, because it's not really an American thing to do. But I mean. Like we were talking about last week, dude, the people in Europe, they already have their, their years ahead of us and they've been wearing speedos forever. So I go, you know what? I'm going to bring it here. And if people are uncomfortable, then that's their problem. I'm not. I, I feel agree. good in it. I agree. And, and you rock the fuck out of it, by the way. Dude, thank you, bro. And I think it's a fun thing too. I think that people do get a kick out of it. And those that are weirded out by it it's like all right dude maybe then i don't even want to talk to you if you're weirded out by a fucking speedo it's not like my dick is out yeah you know and i got hot legs as well i feel like it's just the people that are insecure about their own body that are insecure about me wearing a speedo why should you give that many fucks if chicks can wear a fucking shoelace around their butthole then why can't i wear a speedo dude you know (laughs) Yeah, I agree completely. That's sick. I'm I'm happy for you. Yeah, and I don't know. Maybe you know, if I come to Nebraska, I'd go to Funplex, the speedo might come out. Who knows? That's kind of a that's more of a kids' place, though. Yeah, that's a family center. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I mean, then that's that's also the thing too. Is like I'm not fucking after wearing... at, and well, like Saturday night during the adults only. There you go. There you go. Right. Right. That'll be a hit like, there, bro. Yeah, it was. All the moms were talking about me. I, I could, you know, I was kind of like, you know, I was hanging out with people and I could, but these moms were like, oh my God, like that Speedo is fucking awesome. And I was like, so you were low key pulling, pulling cougars? <laughs> low key. I'm not going to say that I was. I didn't, I didn't fucking, you know, but they liked it. They, they were fans. <laughs> they were fans. You had to leave in one more. It's a good conversation, you know, icebreaker. Yeah yeah. 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 It's like, what? You, Cause at first, you know, when you do the diaper, when you're at the lake, you put the life jacket on underneath. And I had that on for a little bit and I got out of the water and like, people were like, dude, are you even, are you naked under that life jacket right now? And then I ripped it off and I was like, nope, I got a Gito on. And it was fun. People I don't like it. the name Gito. That just every time you say that, I'm like, uh. Okay, Gene, Gene Speedo, my Speedo. I mean, like, if it's a Gito, call it that. But like, I like that. The branding on that could be better. I guess is what I'm saying. Okay, I'll try yeah. to think of something else. Yeah, yeah. I think because it well, it has Gene print. It's like a Gene. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, 
yeah, you're right. You're right. Maybe it's just a me thing. But uh, any, how how the weekend finish? What were yeah? What what else? Um, not too much, man. Went back home. Got back uh last night. Just you know, I mean, if you've had any lake days and you got a boat, you're it pretty much consists of drinking a lot of beers, going around and uh, snacking all day, meat and cheeses and. Yeah. good old-fashioned american memorial day weekend well, i love the holidays where like you might sit down that one time for like your big main like plate of food when you like go through the line but mm. other than that you spend most of your time just walking up to that snack table every like 30 minutes and just grabbing a handful of like crackers and cheese and shit and like certain dips and you're like oh this is awesome and then you run back down to the pool and you're like fuck yeah this is it this yeah. is america yeah it was an American weekend, and that's that's pretty much all that sums it up. Did I maybe have a little too many beers one night and uh, forgot some things? Yeah, but that's okay. Oh well, that's okay. That's how it works. That's how American. It works. It's American. That's American. I wasn't the only one. I wasn't yeah. the only one. So if everybody else is doing it, then it's fine. Right. Right. Um. <laughs> Let's dive yeah, into the let's yeah, dive into the idea. content, the Husker, the Husker content, dude. Not, and, and, not... and and Eddie, I, this is the best part right here. I love this part. We're sponsored this week. We're sponsored yeah. this week again. It's by Husker Hype Radio. Go follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok at Husker Hype Radio on all platforms. It's super dope. Go do Those that. Those guys are freaking hilarious, bro. It not only be- not only do I follow them for the podcast, which is very informative about Husker football, but also the clips they make, the clips out of the podcast. I I laugh my ass off. I, I roll on the floor laughing at some of these, you know? I agree. It's just awesome. And don't be afraid to to tap the share or go in the comments and, and tag your best friend. That's always fun. That's always fun. Like, comment, subscribe, and folks, we said it last week. We'll say it this week again. This is an interactive broadcast slash podcast. If you want to hear something being touched on the podcast, then we will touch it for you. I'll touch a lot of crazy shit right on this podcast for you. Dude, I, you just got to type it in the comments. <laughs> right. Right. And we're waiting on it. We're waiting on it. Some cougar oriented questions. Who's to say? Um, so, so do you want to kick us off on the headlines of the week here, Ed? Dude. Yeah. I mean, we're recording this on Wednesday, the 31st last day before June pride month begins and Nebraska and the nation just released a couple of dates for schedules. And that's always an exciting time. Cause you know, right now it's kind of quiet. Not too much happening. Maybe some recruits here and there taking little mini visits. I mean, I know that the freshmen moved in the other day as well. But other than that, dude, nobody's really practicing. It's kind of the off time for everybody. Um, But, yeah, the corporations or Fox and CBS and ESPN all release some schedules. We'll just start down the line here. First game of the season at Minnesota. Prime time, 7 p.m. Central Time on Fox. I like that. I like that one. Absolutely. You love to see that. That's that's a Friday, too. So that's like the game of the fucking week right there. Oh, it's a Friday? Yeah, the 31st. Eddie, the 31st? Today's today's the fifth month of the year. That's only three months away. Eddie, that's only 90 days away. Doesn't that make your fucking... Wait, no. It's 90. No, wait, six, oh. seven, eight. It's 60 days away. Nine, no, 90. No, no. Wait, five to six to seven to eight. Yeah, three months away, 90 days. Yes. Dude, that's awesome, man. I know. I've been watching, like, pretty much every day I, I watch a Nebraska football hype video, and I get fired the fuck up. Yep. I saw I the one too. that Husker Hype Radio released on their Instagram today. One of the greatest touchdowns in all of Husker Hype Radio history, mm-hmm. our reaction, and 
kind of something that made us the greatest, most high broadcast in all of college football, it really cemented our role um, in that area. And looking back on that, dude, is just something that brings a tear to my eye. It makes me so happy how far we've come, you know, to now we're doing podcasts, we're making skits. I got a fucking real ass microphone in my hand, dude. We didn't have that last time. We're we're recording off a little phone. And now That's it's true. just it's just it's just growing, dude. And it's gonna keep on growing and can't wait to get our first sponsor other than Huskripe Radio. It's yeah, how do we no soon. if you know anybody that wants to sponsor us, it'd be sick. Um uh, but yeah, dude, I was thinking I'm just gonna email like Fireball and literally just be like, hey, we're Huskripe Radio and we're the most high broadcast in all of college football. And for every Husker touchdown, we drink a shot of Fireball. And I, I don't need money from them, but fuck, give me a couple of Fireball gear, some shirts. Man, yeah, you know, dude, literally like just that. supply my drinking and that's all I need. And then we can just act like we're a le- like we have a legit sponsor, which we would if they're giving us yeah. stuff. That's a legit sponsor. So yes. I think that be like, dude, give me a fucking one of those kegs of Bro. fireballs, maybe two, and I'll be set. Yeah, especially those big buckets they can throw in the freezer. You can have some of them cold, some of them not cold. Because I hate to do the bottle. I hate putting the bottle in the fridge or the freezer, and then you pour it, and it looks like that lick, like syrup shit. And I'm like, ah, yeah. And then like, yeah, but if it's in the shooter, I don't think about it because it's just all down in one hatch. Right, right. Yeah, you take it out of that little gallon thing, and it's just like, yeah, like you're pouring some Aunt Jemima right inside your shot glass, you know. But Yo, hey, the- I'm not knocking on Fireball. Oh, that stuff's delicious. Fireball, a delicious beverage sponsored. But honestly, though, if Jack Fire like was like, "Yo, boys, I see the work you're putting in," and like Fireball is getting all this free press because that's what we're doing. We're giving them free press. So why pay for something that you're already doing or getting for free? You know, that's a that's a marketing deal. So maybe we'd be like, "Yo, Jack Fire, look at all the f- shit we've done," and they and like we get nothing. What if we, what if we did this for you and they gave us a deal, and then we turn around and we're like, "Yo, Fireball, remember all that cool shit we were doing for you." We're getting paid to do it over here, so you should let us do it. You know, because right. we don't, you know. Is Jack business. Fire? Is he the founder of Fireball? No, like Jack Fire, like Jack Daniels Fire. It's like Fireball, but it's Jack Daniels. Oh, oh, yeah. you're saying so? We're gonna put some leverage on yeah. ourselves. Yes. Be like, well, you know what, Fireball, we do like you guys, but Jack Fire, they're kind of interested in us right now. Yes, so, exactly. Um, yeah. Yes. I like that, Aaron. Yo, like August that. 31st is a Thursday, dude. Thursday. August 31st. I just I just double checked. Yeah. Bro, it's gotta be one of like the first games of the fucking year then. It's I think it's like the first one. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's super Prime dope. Time. 92 days and 57 minutes exactly, folks, from when you're from when we're recording right now. By the time you listen to this, it'll be 90 Less than days. 90 days. Yes. yes it'll be yes. 90 days. Yes. Um, dude, and you know why I like that one? Because that's 7 p.m. Central time, so that means 5 p.m. my time. So I don't got to wake up at 9 in the fucking morning to watch the boys play. I can also have a little pregame action, watch some other college football games, get some shit done. Yeah. I, know, time. I Dude, Eddie, I might go to this fucking game, bro. Because, oh, God. It reminds me, we got to buy these tickets to Colorado, but that's a different story. I've been thinking about going to Minneapolis, dude. This would be a fucking game to go to, bro. That'd be so lit. It would be. It would be. Well, so then let's let's hop on over to 9-9, which is a Saturday. Colorado at Colorado, 11 a.m. Central Time, 9 p.m. or 9 a.m. my time. Big noon kickoff at Colorado dude Urban Meyer will be there Reggie Bush will be there and I'm honestly waiting on the call right now from big noon kickoff to get the boys pressed like that's why I was gonna say we don't even need to buy these tickets bro because we're we're gonna be we're gonna have a little segment on fucking big noon kickoff or something bro they'd be dumb not to have us they would be and here's my here's my um kind of spiel for 
our us getting the Colorado tickets is we might have to play spy, bro. We might have to play spy. What I'm thinking is we get our tickets. I'll fly the boulder. You drive, fly, whatever. Meet up there on game day, maybe the night before. And we make some, we, we got to do it. It's, it's part of what we got to do as being spies. We're going to wear Colorado football gear the night before. No, what the fuck are you friends? No, can you hear me out? Make some friends at the bars, meet some people go, Hey, you know, I know that's a really high demand for football tickets, but we're some of the biggest Colorado Buffalo fans in, in, in the world. All while doing this, we're, we're, we're crossing our fingers behind our back. We're some of the biggest college. We're some of the biggest college football fans in the world, dude. And we love the Colorado Buffaloes. Dion, I, I, I pray to him every single night. And then we do that. We, we get the tickets target acquired target secured meet up with them the next morning when our Husker gear and we go, gotcha, bitch, go fuck yourself, <sighs> go big red. That's how we got to do it, bro. That's how we got to do it because I don't want to fucking pay $300 and give money. No, bro. To the they're, no, athletic bro, they're $500 at the piece now. I don't want to give money to the Colorado athletic. athletic bro, the thing is, okay. I love your story. But it's not going to work because this game is only going to get more and more and more hype. Buddy, I think we got that's I think big Cobb energy, some big red Husker hype energy is we just got to pull the goddamn trigger and say, hey, we're big red fans. We're coming in here. and We're paying whatever the goddamn price we need to pay. Aaron, I would love to do that, but I haven't worked in a month, bro. OK, well, how, how what the fuck? It's September 9th. How many months is that away? It's four months away. Say one hundred hundred dollars okay. a month, one hundred twenty five dollars a month right there. Boom. OK, that's five hundred bucks. OK, but dude, I really do think that my strategy will work. I don't, I don't think that you understand. Bro, you can, I think you're see some I think that there's girls no who way. don't give a fuck about the game and we can say, hey, you know what? Okay, I feel we'll like... put a pull up. We'll clip this shit. We're putting a pull up. Folks, do you think that Eddie's going to pull off this shit? Because I vote for no. If you vote for Aaron, then you type Aaron. If you vote for Eddie, then you click on Eddie's name. And I think that the hypesters will will determine what the fuck is the real truth. We could be a, we could be spies, bro. I have taken we action classes. Be. I've been in a play, and we can play this shit off, dude. And I know you can yes. act too, brother. I know you can act I'm, too. Uh... And we gotta believe in ourselves, and that—that's way more of a story than fucking putting up to the man and buying five hundred dollar tickets. We're gonna trick some fucking weasels and get tickets for a hundred dollars and go in there and turn on them like that. I just don't think that there's a lot of weasels out there. Oh, there's you don't think that Buffalo fans are absolute weasels? No, I think they are, but like <laughs> they're also paying a lot for their tickets too. You know what I'm saying? Like these, this price I'm seeing on the secondhand app isn't just for Nebraska fans. You know what I'm saying? That's true. And even from the from the Colorado website, like it was, I think the, right. the least price was three hundred dollars. And they were fucking like they sold out in how long? You're right, dude. So I, I think it's just one of those. And I remember when they were like three hundred bucks, and we were like, "Well, Eddie was like, Yo, let's wait. They're gonna go down.'" And then they're at they they the highest I saw them was at seven fifty a piece. They're back down to five hundred a piece. I don't know if they'll go much below five or four hundred bucks. I think this is my entry point. <laughs> so big mm. new Colorado, big new kickoff. Eddie, I'll cover the cost of it. You pay me back in in installments. Even if it takes you five months, that's a hundred. Well, I got a free months. flight out there because I got some Southwest money. So yeah. that, that all I need to pay for is the ticket. But still, dude, I just fucking God, it's so stupid. It's so, it's, and also that could really like have a, well, you know that the Nebraska fans are going to pay, but like the Colorado fans, it, it seems like for them, they might not have that good of fans there, bro. If they're just, they're just going to be some rich you know, Buffalo's, I mean, Nebraska fans are different. So they'll, they'll pay money for tickets and they'll still be loud and proud, but Colorado fans might just be like some old big wigs out there, you know, not even real 
football fans, just yeah. people that, oh, yeah, I went to the Colorado-Nebraska game. Oh, yeah. By the way, I'm also going to get those fucking red and white overalls. I went to the uh, – I went to the – what's that joint called in the – Ballers. In the bookstore. I went to the bookstore on campus, and they have those for 65 bucks. Nice. I'm going to get some. Cop yeah. Cop them. Do you want me to get you a pair? Um, Maybe. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I could probably get some on like online or some shit. We'll, we'll all the out. ones I saw online were like over a hundred bucks easy. But if you can find one, then that's cool. But just let me know. Okay. Um, uh, NIU week three. That's week three. Yep, that looks like week three. They're not. They they kind of week one, two, and three are all set. But then there's later games later on in the season that they said i don't know how yeah. this all works but um yeah niu 6 p.m central time fox sports one that's our first home game so that's lit as fuck it's a night uh-huh. game it'll be a night game basically for the fourth quarter um at illinois illinois this is a team out that you remember we were doing the the our projections for who's gonna win the west and the big ten mm-hmm. Illinois, that's going to be a game that'll be a dog fight. 7 p.m., that's late. They're having that for a reason. They're trying to get up for us. And uh, yeah. fuck Illinois. Yeah, dude, they're trying to – because they know that Nebraska is going to be going off three – well, that's actually – we'll be playing Michigan before them. So we'll be, yeah, 4-0 going into that fucking – oh, Mich- NIU, Michigan, Five. and Law Tech. So that would be the sixth game of the week. That's the no. sixth game of the season. Yeah. So yeah, dude, they're gonna be um they're gonna be like this is this is a big game. This is gonna be a big big ten football game. There's a lot of eyes are gonna be on this game. Prime time. Illinois is gonna try to rile up their students, their crowd. Probably gonna this game will probably sell out. Yeah. They're also Memorial Stadium, Battle of Memorial Stadium. We gotta fucking show up to their memorial stadium with our red because mm-hmm. That's our name, bro. That that's gonna be fun under the uh, lights. <laughs> I feel like Illinois doesn't play too many under the light games either. You know, like when do you ever see Illinois? Um, never. Yeah. When do you ever watch Illinois other than the when they play Nebraska? Right. Right. Never. So this one is gonna. This one. It's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a good one. Purdue. Fuck Purdue. I do Purdue. I might. I hate Purdue. Top three in the in the Big Ten. It's all really? because when I went to that fucking game at Purdue when I lived in Indy, and that was the game. Drew Brees went to the locker room at halftime and was like coaching up the boys, and then we they came back and we lost. I'm super pissed about it. So fuck Purdue. This this game is basically like 11 a.m. or two or three o'clock. Because yeah, it's like it's if, it's if indoor, they haven't yeah. finalized it. If we're good and both teams are good, it'll be probably noon. If not, it'll probably be three o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I forgot to put I think it's I don't even know if they have a TV provider yet for that one either. Um, it could be Fox or CBS or NBC. Weird thing, dude. I feel like no big ten games this year are gonna be on ESPN. I think that that contract kind of expired. It's gonna be I think this is the last year for Fox, and then next year's all Big Ten games are going to be NBC or CBS. I thought we were up with Fox. No, it's dude, it's like a huge, like the biggest TV deal ever, and it's CBS and NBC for the let's, Big we Ten. Get, let's fact check it. Fact check that one, Eddie. Can you check fact check who, who we who we signed that one with? Um. So Purdue, interesting story that he's got going on here. Who did the Big Ten? Because the ESPN and the SEC are like this, so that's lame. The what? ESPN and SEC are there like this. They they like suck each other off, you know. ESPN and SEC? No, dude. I'm yeah, they do. They do. They do. And there's a lot of CBS games on SEC or C, SEC games on CBS. But I think is. I always just thought that ESPN just had the big games and then that they defaulted to like most other games of Fox. I have no yeah. idea though, to be honest. That's I'm just dumb. I think ESPN is kind of like dying in that thing though. So here it is. The Big Ten has completed a new seven year media rights agreement 
with Fox, CBS, and NBC that is oh. set to bring in more than $7 billion to one of the nation's most powerful athletic conferences. And it will begin this year and run through the end of 2930. Imagine that news, Eddie. It's like, oh, Everybody gets a fucking medal. What what news is that? Everybody gets a everybody gets Big Ten game except for ESPN. That's the only thing that that means is fuck ESPN. Yeah, that that basically is it, dude. And I feel like so now SEC is going to be more on ESPN, and you're going to see a lot more Big Ten on CBS. Yeah. Speaking of CBS, Iowa, Nebraska, big noon kickoff, Black Friday. In Lincoln, Nebraska. Eddie, will you be at this game this year? Dude, I feel like that would be so fun to go to. Yeah, I I think I might have to try to, you know, it would be Thanksgiving. Go see the fam on Friday. Go with Aaron to the Iowa-Nebraska game and watch some Hawkeyes get fucking slaughtered, dude. Shot down. Dead by Herbie. uh, We can find find somebody that can help. We can host a a pregame Husker hype area and where you and i do a 10 minute pregame and then we could honestly even have a fucking video at halftime with our mics bro we're we're moving up on this world eddie we have possibilities are endless we do it's great to be us right now and who knows bro by the end of the season we're on trev's radar and he goes hey guys i got a i got a booth for you up actually in there it's right next to uh Greg Sharp and Damon Benning. And if, if you guys would want to really have a, you know, a hype broadcast, we'll have all the fireball for you in the world. We'll have all the Valentino's pizza and, and limited runs us. And, um, you know, it'd really be great to uh, do that, but we might, we might decline that offer and just say, you know what? We want to be with the fans. That's exactly, I, Eddie, you, know, you read my mind that whole time you were like saying all that shit. And I was like, Nope, I want to be on the sideline. And then you said, fireball and valentino pizza and runza and then i was like that's a great point that's a great point yeah because you can drink in the box but when you're a plebe on the sideline no no fireball i don't know if it can does that start this year for alcohol or is that next year i don't know i know that the basketball stadium already did it this year so hopefully that they uh they get on with it with football um and how fun would it be on the sidelines when Herbie takes out the t-shirt cannon and we're on there with him and we, we implement the smoke sh- machine, implement the smoke machine. Come on oh, yeah, on the field. And it's like your little smoke machine that's in the kitchen right now. It's just like, yeah, <laughs> it's like barely smoky at all. That'd be fun, dude. That would be absolutely so much fun. Yeah, dude. So that's the schedule. Fucking pretty pumped up um well do you think we'll see more fox games for nebraska or you see you think that some cbs we're gonna get picked up by cbs and they're gonna see 230 games more because dude i remember the last few years nebraska always got the freaking 11 a.m central time 9 a.m our time morning games we had to wake up and fucking be ready and drinking fireball by 9 a.m but these these ones that they just scheduled i mean there's a couple 11 a.m. ones, but there's three night games that I'm very excited for. Very pumped up to have right. some night games finally. Yep. The the year we went three and nine, Eddie, I feel like every every game we played was at 9 a.m. our time. Yeah, dude, literally. And that's freaking annoying. But like 11 a.m., dude, 11 a.m. Central time. So 11. That's 10, 9 a.m. Yeah, that's, still, that, that's still 9, yeah. But yeah, dude, that shit uh, kind of sucks. So hopefully, when Nebraska gets on the right track, um, we don't see too many of those more uh, morning games because I'm sick and tired of it. Well, the thing is, is Big Noon still like a prime time game, you know? So like that's kind of that's still good for us to be in that slot. But selfishly, you want us to be a night game, right? And it is kind of weird that they're scheduling. I mean, I guess they always schedule them this early, but it must be the the hype of Mr. Matt Rule that's that's bringing all these these later games. And I think yeah. that hype will be well deserved. Or maybe the college football script writers know something. Do you think that there's college football script writers like there are in the NFL? No, college is 
college is the only true game left. Of only true. Yeah. There's too much tradition, too much pattern. She you can't yep. script that. No. So you're going to tell me that that somebody scripted the Auburn, Alabama, the hundred yard kickoff return. I don't exactly. Think so. I don't think so. Exactly. That shit just happens. And that's the beauty of college football. That is why I'm a college football fan over NFL any freaking day. Uh huh. I agree. Pageantry. Pageantry. Tradition. Tradition. Marching band. The cheerleaders, the dance team, the people, the people going crazy. You know what I actually like about the South, though? And a lot of people hate this is. I kind of like it how they wear polos at the games. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. It's I mean it's and then their tailgates are awesome too. Like Nebraska's are sick. I've only actually been to a few myself, I'm not gonna lie. So I I'm kind of just speaking from being a Husker fan, giving bias that they're sick, but I bet you could vouch that. Yeah, yeah, That's they're awesome. sick. Yeah, they're sick. Yeah. But like down south, dude, you know, it's it's a little warmer down there. So they yeah. wake up in the morning, they have crawfish boils and shit and sausages and yeah like the 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 black friday tailgate against iowa that's gonna be cold as fuck in lincoln nebraska but if you're in tuscaloosa alabama when well, you're playing auburn for the iron bowl that shit's a fucking walk in the park bud yeah dude that'd be, <laughs> like i think the ones that old miss that one that one's very classy like everybody's yeah. wearing polos there and shit and then probably lsu florida the swamp, I think that would be a sick place to play or watch or watch a game. Just pretty much any fucking Florida State school would be down fucking south. dope in Tallahassee. Yeah, yeah, man. I just kind of do, and that's that's also just a big thing for recruits as well. It's not like we can't get them here, but being like, hey, dude, we got warm weather. We're not playing fucking snow every game. Hey, well, you know what, Eddie? We're still getting recruits. We are. Talk about them. talk about him. If you got a guy like Matt Rue out the helm, he's gonna bring in quarterbacks like Danny Kalen. Yes, who just got announced as an elite eleven finalist. Gonna compete against that motherfucker, Dylan Mariola. Gonna p- compete against him in the elite eleven finals. And dude, that thing's televised, bro. And they make that shit almost a reality show. What if Danny Kalen goes in there and he just shocks the fucking world and maybe maybe him and uh dylan fight like a little like reality tv fight yeah they like put it they pit him against each other they're like okay day one we have dylan versus danny uh here in the skill toss yeah yeah and then uh and then um danny can be like oh dude i just talked to your dad uh dominic about nebraska you it's really fun there, you know, and I'm glad I went there over like any other school and you had to choose Georgia for some reason. That's pretty stupid. But actually though, like it's crazy for Nebraska to have two quarterbacks in the elite 11. I mean, that's like basically the top 11 guys in the class for quarterbacks to have two guys in the same class wanting to go to our school or thinking about them. That's sick for us. That's fucking sick. Right. Oh, is Nebraska quarterback university? Is Nebraska QBU? Is Nebraska QBU? I think so. And and hey, man, said it before, I'll say it again. Dylan could still come here, bro. He could still come here. He's got another season of high school football to play. And once he sees what's really going down in Lincoln, he might flip that switch. Now nah, we don't I want him see. anymore. We got Danny Kalen. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. He's he's the chapter that I skipped over because it was boring. I don't even want to read it anymore. Right. Um, d- another name, Eddie. We both named guy coming in. Just started class or just moved in or about to start class. Malachi Coleman, Lincoln East product. I listened to a good interview with him with Sean Callahan from Husker Online. I, I I like this kid. He's catching 700 passes a day at least, dude. Oh, my God, bro. Yeah. His arms might fall off. He might have to take that back a little bit, actually. Bro, I didn't know this until I listened to this podcast. Buddy wasn't even a wide receiver until this year, or like until the last two years. He was a defensive end or playing – he was playing defense. Really? Yeah. And then so, they're like, this motherfucker's quick as shit. He yeah, can he's burn like, anyone down the side. Yeah, he's like, this dude's fast, tall, and lengthy. He should probably play wide receiver. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, I mean, 
if he's catching 700 passes a day, then hopefully he doesn't have fucking brick hands, which I don't think so. After you catch 700 passes every day, you'll probably uh, get used to catching the football. Um, but yeah, dude's fast as fuck. The thing I like most about, well, one of the things I like most about what he had to say is he said Billy Kemp, wide receiver transfer from Virginia, and Jeff Sims were like role models to him by the amount of work ethic and, and positivity that they were spreading to him. That's, that's good. To have two transfers from different schools, Georgia Tech and from Virginia, to come to Nebraska and already start developing a culture with a, with a, a freshman – that like is trying to build some culture and like a hard work mentality. I mean, come on, you can't teach culture. That's just, that's just bred into you. That's awesome, bro. Because you know, they could come in here and they got, you go, you know, I got one or two years left. I might just focus on myself. I'm going to play my ball to the best of my ability and not really worry about the kids that are coming up. But they said, screw that. I'm going to, I'm going to start some culture here, just like you said, dude, and really yeah. kind of mold the guys that they're playing with and the ones that will be there years after them and buying in to the Nebraska football yeah. culture. And, and I mean, the cherry on top for me was, is that Malachi Coleman, a kid who is a freak athlete called Jeff Sims, a freak athlete. So when they're calling each other, these kind of things, I'm like, Hey, this is a, this is a cream of the crop kind of guy. This is the, corn rises to the cream type deal or whatever you know what i'm saying dude i am so excited to finally see some quarterbacks who can run the ball and lower their shoulder yeah. you know <laughs> not not trying to i mean casey we love him he helped us out for a year but but he was a pocket passer dude you know behind, behind a pocket that was like not a real pocket. Right. And the last thing that he wanted to do was run. And there were so many instances, I feel like, last year where what he should have done was run, but he was really trying to force it downfield. Jeff Sims, I feel like, is going to be the opposite of that, where he can still throw the football, but he likes to use his legs, and he, he'll he run. He's a, he's a little mini Lamar Jackson, dude. He played football at Georgia Tech. you got to run if you're playing at Georgia Tech. I've seen the highlights. Dude's fast. He can um, move. So I'm just really excited to see some things. You know, it might look a little shady down there. Offensive line misses a block. He goes whoop, whoop, up the field. Touchdown, Jeff Sims. Bro, touchdown. I can't wait. Bro, Eddie, you're getting me fired up right now, dude. I can't fucking wait <laughs> for that first fucking, like, 80-yard one he breaks for a touchdown yes oh and we're all gonna be at the stage just waiting for him across the line and then as soon as he does we all fucking, fucking Dude, crazy and he's got one of those names too you know like sue yes. where everybody goes <laughs> yeah you could go sue. <laughs> yes that's gonna be every goddamn plays this year sue. yeah you're so right about that He's got the name. He's got the name for that. Yeah. Who's on? Who's? Do we have a guy on defense this year that that we can that you can Luke. do that? Luke. Luke Reimer. Luke. Yeah. yeah. That's his. That's his. I want to see. I I want to see the running quarterback, and I also want to see some fucking old school Nebraska black shirt football, where they pop the ball out. They they give him a hit, and ball goes flying up, ten yards in the air catch it in the air, run it back for a touchdown. I want to see some defensive touchdowns, dude. Yep. I'm looking for the def – those ones fire me up the most. And the big hits where where the dude gets hit and you're like, oh, my God, this guy is severely injured after this one. You know? Bro, I dude, don't pray for anybody's injury on the field, but I do kind of like it when the game stops because <laughs> somebody has to get up from a big hit. Yeah. I mean – wheezing and the wind is knocked out of him. And then it's it, it's the hits that they only replay one time, or they might not even replay it at all. If you miss it that first time, you're fucked. But it's when a dude just gets hit like he got fucking smashed by a car, dude. And you're like, oh, my God, buddy didn't even see that one. <laughs> Black shirt football. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, if that fuck yeah, I agree. Um, I was looking, doing some research. What do you think our over-under for wins is this year, Ed? Over oh, like the what yeah, Vegas puts what's, out? what's the line you think right now? Isn't it six or six and a half? It's six and a half. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at you right now, Eddie. 
And I'm I'm putting a, I'm putting my fucking mortgage on over six and a half. You're put you're putting that Nebraska will win seven games. Well, we did predict earlier in an episode that they were going to go undefeated and win the national championship. So that only makes sense that if you're a man of your word, that you will do that. Exactly, and that's all. If all you have is your word, that's all you have, dude. I. <laughs> I feel like Vegas might be losing a lot of money this year. You know, they've they've uh, gave Nebraska some shit in the past, and but now they know that this beast is going to awaken this season, and they're going six and a half. You you think you think it might be almost a little less since the past five years we've only won four max games. Bro, last year it was seven and a half, and we had won three years the year prior. Yeah. So these motherfuckers, Vegas is scared of the big red, dude. Yeah, they're scared of the big red, and well, but I also feel like they do put us so high because we're a little bit delusional at some point. That's what it. That's what it is too, because like the line probably started at six, but then people bet up the over so much, so they moved it to six and a half. You know. Yeah, and if like, you get a bet at that number, then it stays there, right? When you lock it, yeah. When you lock right. it, but yep, yep, yep. Right, but. Yeah, dude, I think that um, just like just like we were saying earlier, man, Vegas knows something. Yeah, they know that 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 this storm is coming in hot. There's Free there's money. a cold front. There's a cold front behind this storm. It might create a little bit of a twister, if you know what I'm saying. I know, exa- dude, Eddie, dude, I'm fucking lit right now, bro. I'm Eddie. making free. It's free money. It's free money. Over six and a half. Lock it in. Does that only regular season? Regular season, yep. Yeah, so so we got to win seven okay. games. All we got to do is win seven. Okay, we got to make a bowl and then win one more game. Okay, fine. Easy. Come on, baby. We're already. We already said, like you said, we're gonna win twelve fucking games. Yeah, and then out of like we'll be going in the Michigan Michigan game. Five four and zero. Oh. Yeah. Play Michigan five and zero. Oh. Illinois easy. That's another six and zero. Oh. And then who do we got next after that? Some fucking bullshit. I think it's Northwestern. Those nerds are going to get smacked. Seven wins. Boom. You already got your fucking 7-0. It's, your- North, it's Northwestern after, after a bye, too, Eddie. I'm so lit about that. The It's Illinois, and then I have my marathon. It's a bye week, and then it's Northwestern at home after a bye. I hope we fucking light them up, dude. Dude, I kind of love that your, your marathon is on a bye week because – the people of Nebraska know nobody's going to run that shit on a Saturday that Nebraska right. plays. Like, we got to fucking. Oh, start. actually, no, Eddie. You know what? The Omaha Marathon is on a fucking the day after of game day. So that's why I'm not doing the Omaha one. I got to do it on a bye week so I can. Can't do that. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, Eddie, I'm going to pivot on you. I know you said a non conference team that you wanted to see us play, like an SEC uh-huh. team. I actually did prepare something for Maryland today because that's a team that I feel like we don't play very often. It's an no, interesting team on the East. We play them this year. And and I'm their quarterback, Talia Tagovailoa, to his brother. He's mm-hmm. gonna be a, I think he's gonna be a dog this year. He's the only he's the top returning quarterback in the Big Ten. Well, well yeah, and and there's fucking three schools that have returning quarterbacks. 11 out right. of 14 schools have new quarterbacks. That's a right. crazy stat. Probably something that we're going to see a lot more with the transfer portal. But still, dude, 11 out of 14 schools have a new quarterback, except Maryland, Tulia Tagovailoa, Michigan, fucking um, O'Connell, right? J.J. McCarthy. No, J.J. McCarthy is uh, – who, who is their guy that transferred to Iowa, though? What's his Kate name? McNamara. Yeah, okay. So yeah, JJ, yeah, JJ McCarthy. Right. Yep. And then Northwestern, some fucking nerd that nobody cares about. Well, that the, the reason why I have an asterisk on that one too is because that's a maybe if he starts. He's not even projected to start right now. Interesting. His yeah. name's Ryan Helinski, if you remember that name. Helinski. Okay. Yep. yep. Now I yep. yep, that rings a bell. Yep. That rings a bell. So we could even say 12 out of 14 schools probably will have a new quarterback in the Big Ten this year. Correct. We could say we could say that. That's nuts, bro. But yeah, I think I think uh, he's gonna be good as fuck. I wrote something. Their head coach, 
Michael Loxley. This is a guy under the radar. I, I, you don't think about other head coaches until you do a deep dive sometimes or if they're super notable. But this dude was the offensive coordinator for uh, Alabama for a couple of years, 2018. That's they pretty, won a national champion. They won a natty, bro. Yeah. Loxley, that's his name? <laughs> Michael Loxley. Yep. Dude. And then they have – do you remember Kevin Sumlin, the Texas A&M old head coach? Mm-hmm. They have him as the associate head coach. Holy shit, bro. These I know, guys bro. might be a little sleeping giant. I mean, I think they look gonna... here good. Their over under not... is uh their over under is seven and a half. So they're one game projected above us. Wow. That's yeah. pretty nuts, dude. And I'm just looking at the all the Big Ten quarterback stats and two to uh Leah, whatever his name. He's got a higher completion percentage than anybody in the Big Ten, less yards than C.J. Stroud and Aiden O'Connell, but those guys threw the ball a lot more. And, I mean, 67% completion rating, the best in the Big Ten. All and, I mean, year. Maryland Maryland doesn't have the wide receivers that Ohio State or even Purdue. Purdue had a couple of good receivers and a good tight end. Uh, Maryland didn't have shit for brands for receivers. Yeah. And you know his brother. He won the fucking Heisman. So I think Buddy's got a little bit of swagger in him somewhere. And actually, I don't think he did win the Heisman. Tua Tago, Tua won the Heisman. Did he win the Heisman? I don't think he did. Fact check. Alexa, did Tua Tagovailoa win the Heisman? Twenty eighteen. Really. Well, I guess that's egg on my face. <laughs> Wait, did two actually win the Heisman? Did I don't. He did? No, he. They just said that he was the first. No, Tua did not. Kyler Murray won that year. Yep. Okay. So Aaron is right. I thought I was wrong. Aaron, Aaron is, is right. right. Aaron's right. You would have got that question right on Jeopardy. I dude, I would have. I I was pretty confident that he did not make it because that's a that's one of those big conversations people have like oh who's the best quarterback in recent history to not win a heisman yeah that's what i've heard before but uh what else eddie you got anything else here buddy um so yeah you said maryland gonna be a good football team watch out for him when do they when do we play them this year we play them it's later on in the season yeah the week before wisconsin okay that'll be week 10 november home Good. good. That's gonna be good. That's gonna be good. Hell yeah, dude. Um, another. So you know how we play on Thursday? We play on Friday twice this year. By the way, I forgot to mention that we play Black Illinois. Friday. Illinois is on Friday, and then Black Friday, and then on Thursday too. Against and then Thursday is the first game of the year. So we play on not Saturdays a quarter of the time this year. Wow, dude. I'm gonna have to change my schedule up a little bit here. And make sure that I got these games locked down and loaded and i'm not fucking streaming from the boat yeah true i'll get it though um kind of you know we talked about we we got our recruit talking we got our other big 10 talking we always kind of like to do you know some some just broad husker stuff Yep. Aaron, you know, you've been to a lot of live football games in Lincoln. You've been to West Lafayette. You've seen some games in Iowa City. Anyway, we, uh, where else have you been? The Rose Bowl. Uh, I, yeah, that's, is that it? Is that it? Did you, you said, per, yeah, that's it, I think. I don't know. That's it. Okay. Yeah. I've only seen the Bra- – we, well, yeah, you saw the Rose Bowl. We saw Oregon and UCLA there, though. We both did go and watch that. Um, but, yeah, as far as Nebraska goes, dude, I've only seen them in Lincoln. Um, But there are some very memorable games that I've had. I'd say, like, um, one that was very memorable for me, it was a non-conference game, believe it or not, McNeese State 2012. You remember that one, dude? Yeah. Yep. Where it was a dogfight against fucking McNeese State for no reason. And in the fourth quarter, I think there's like a minute left or so in the game. And we're down against McNeese State. And we run either on third or fourth down a little like angle 
pass to Amir Abdullah over the middle, breaks tackles, scores, and we win the game. Yeah, because that was one of those games where we're like, holy shit, we're going to lose to a fucking non-conference opponent. Yeah, and that was in 2012 where Bo Pelini was on the hot seat. Did get fired, so that game probably didn't help him out. Um, but, dude, yeah, I just remember that game where the stadium was like, Amir Abdullah is is really him. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think of, like, Amir Hamdullah. <laughs> <laughs> you can put that in front of you. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, uh, you mean Jeff Hems or you mean Billy Himkems? Billy M. Kemp's. You mean Air Him Worsfold? <laughs> and him Rosenthal? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, dude, what am I uh my most memorable one from my childhood that like off the top of my head was when we played Iowa State. We lost to them nine to seven. What fucking year is this, dude? I'm a young kid, bro. 2009 bro we're talking 14 years ago i'm 12 years old buddy i remember this game it's a shit day it's raining we score a touchdown in the first quarter and then we don't score the rest of the game and they score three field goals and then we lose nine to seven it was just a shitty day Mm -hmm. that was like one of the last times we ever played iowa state we rarely ever even lost to iowa state in general we lose it in that year and uh it just all around was like super fucking shitty. I was so fucking pissed because Iowa State sucks. Yeah, I don't really remember that one all too well. I was nine years old. I was fucking eight years old, actually, 2009 football season. So I don't remember that one too much. But I I could imagine um, my dad probably cussing up a storm and then calling my Uncle Rich and telling him how fucking retarded the Nebraska team is and why can't they win against Iowa State and being very mad. I just, yeah, that's that's probably what happened. Um, another one that was really cool that I went to was we, um, my sisters got me tickets for my first ever Husker game, which actually didn't end up being my first Husker game because I got free tickets from one of my cousins and we went to the Penn State game. But anyways, Penn State, that was a cool game. And then the next week they played Minnesota. So I went back to back Husker games and Minnesota game. That was the game where they thanked tom osborne and we were sitting in a place where they had um all like they had you know uh it was what would it be the the east end of the stadium all had like paper things and they were red and white and they would flip their paper over and it said like thanks to which was super sick and then throughout the whole game they had like Husker legends like Trev Alberts, Johnny Rogers, Christian, and Jason Peter, just like everybody big who was coached by Tom Osborne or knew him. And they all give him like a thanks and stuff. And that was dope, dude. That was like an emotional. Yeah. We're thanking the legend, Tom Osborne. And then we kicked the shit out of Minnesota. Fuck yeah. Yeah. So that was really fun, dude. Bro, what about games like that live in infamy for you, regardless if you went to them live or not. Um, ah, fuck, dude, brother. it sucks. They're all losses for me. Yeah, they all. I was about to say the same thing. One one game, I that was rattling in my head was actually when Iowa beat Michigan, number three Michigan, and I was there, and I oh, ran, really? I ran on the field. Is that fucked up? <laughs> Aaron, I, I mean. If you're there though, it's kind of the things where you get lost in the moment. Yeah, you don't, and then you steal, just, you steal some stuff from the field, and then I wipe my ass with their gloves and like a stole helmet and shit, and I threw it in the dumpster. Yeah, and it's not even like you're Iowa fan at that point. You're a college football fan, and you're storming the field, living in the moment. You right. like you'd be stupid not to run on the fucking field when there's when there's yes. a storming of the field. If you if there's a storm, you join the storm, right? You storm yeah. the field, yes. That's and how I probably feel. it's also a thing too. Like when I I when Nebraska lost to Colorado in 2019, I was sitting in the student section. A soul, soul, a soul Husker stole soul in the student section. Got up all the way to the third fucking row, dude. Missed the field goal in overtime. I go, well, that's it. Fuck my life. This fucking is the worst day ever. Start to begin walking up the stairs. And all I can see is just all of the Colorado students in white 
just like storming down. I have no, I have no way of getting up, dude. So I reluctantly joined the storming, but I was down there. And like you, dude, I took a water bottle from the Maraska sidelines. You know, I kind of just looked around, soaked it all in. And I was like, well, it was a great game. And yeah, bro, I want to beat the fuck out of Colorado this year. Dude, me too, so bad. And I, it's going to happen. We will. And Dion will have some funny-ass press conference. It'll be awesome. But, yeah, that was that was a game that really lived in for me. For me. A, a winning game that we had. Uh, remember when we beat Ohio State, came back 21 points? Yep. It was raining. Yep. Levante David uh, took Braxton Miller yep. out of the game. And then, uh, yeah, I like I was like, Dad, I'm done watching this. I'm going up. I'm not, I'm not doing this shit. But I really snuck into the upstairs room with the TV, and I like watched it. And then like they started scoring, and then I came back down, and my dad was watching it too. And we were like, Oh my god, it's happening! It's happening! Rex Burkhead Nate has two fucking insane runs, and and catches it, runs for another touchdown. Biggest comeback in Nebraska football history, 21 points over Ohio State. It was probably their worst years in, like, history, but still. It was, like, our first year in the Big Ten, I think. Beat Ohio State. Night game in Lincoln, Nebraska. I love that. That was a great memory. Yeah. Um, I agree. That's a great one. I mean, whenever you beat Ohio State, fuck the Buckeyes. No one likes them. Has anything ever made you cry? Has one ever made you cry? Bro, the... One second. The Texas one. If, if For those listening, bad podcasting, I put up my finger for the one second. Mac Brown, when we threw yep. the ball, they threw the ball out and they had the, yeah. Well, well, there's still one second left. That shit still pisses me off this day, dude. Dude, it does. I like to call it the most, the, it was the biggest butterfly effect in all of college football history, dude. If Nebraska wins that game, the Big 12 championship, Texas doesn't go on to the national championship. Nebraska beats the number two team in the nation. Bo Pelini is here to stay. And we get recruits. We get all that, dude. Who knows? If if that game would have happened and we played 2010 the next season, we got all that momentum behind us, bro. College football landscape could look a lot different. Same year. I didn't cry for that one for some reason. But uh, we played Texas A&M. Yep, I know exactly the one you're talking about. Yep. And the, that was the one where Bo Pelini got in Taylor Martinez's face and fucking drilled him and told him, get the fuck off the field, you pansy, or whatever he said. And um, I remember I, I, I started crying because we were just getting a flag thrown every other play, and I was like, this isn't fair. Yeah, this is not fair what they're doing to us. And I I shed tears because – I did not think that my boys were treated, getting treated correctly out there. Bro, I could name, like, when we lost to Troy, that fucking sucked. Arkansas State, we almost lost to them. I think we did lose to them, too, another year. Who, who the fuck did we lose to this year? That was dog shit. Fucking Georgia Southern. Anytime we lose, yeah. every time we lose, Eddie, yeah, I a piece of me dies. You and rip then, your shirt and punch a hole in the wall. Yes, and then a piece of me dies. <laughs> And then slowly but surely over the off season of the six months off season, whatever it is, I put myself back together and I don't even remember that shit until we talk about it again. Yeah. You go, <laughs> Oh, Georgia Southern. That was a fluke. All yeah, those other well, nine games that we lost this season flukes like, next season will surely be better. I can talk myself into being super sad about it, but yes, I try to like, be like that never even happened. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And, <laughs> That's just the great part of being a Nebraska football man, a football fan, man. Is we've gone through so many fucking shit games and shit seasons and shit years that when we finally hoist up that college football championship trophy, it's going to be so much more than to any fan that's ever hoisted it up ever before. You yeah. know? We'll be like, we've been through this and through that. We've been through thick and thin and finally being able to – be proclaimed champions will just feel amazing. I agree, Eddie. It's going to feel good this year. It's, yeah. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. And we're only going up from there, dude. Right. Well, I nice, think man. anything else. And if you're 
stupid than you would. Do you do anything else you want to do? I think it's time. I'm going to wrap us up here. What do you got? You got anything else? Yeah, brother. I think it was a good podcast. You know, I we think it was a lot of points. We did, you know, for a dry week, it was a, I was thinking about what we we're going to talk about. I was like, huh, not much happened. And then by golly, it's been like an hour and 20 minutes or something. Yeah, I know, man. And you know, some people can, we just got the podcast gene. I think, you know, it's hard to riff about nothing, but we do it every week, seven weeks in a row. We're still producing our podcast. Cougars love it. Italians <laughs> love it. So I think that we're doing good here and uh, just folks, you know, like comment, subscribe, share, give us ideas to talk about. Yeah. So many things we could. Um, yeah. And next week, Hopefully we'll have a producer, E-Rock. Yes. He's going to be joining the pod kind of he's going to be our he's going to be our Jamie. Yep. I do have Tyler Sidwell. Uh I'm going to tease him. He wants to join. I told him he uh, he should join for a, a segment and he wants to join. So that'll oh, probably happen yeah. at some point. If oh, not that. next week, it'll happen. That'll be fun, dude. Yes. Uh, we'd love to get Tyler on. Pod. And he could like just come to your crib he doesn't have to have yeah. to zoom in huh yeah that's what i was thinking too he no nah, i don't want him over here he kind of smells like shit <laughs> <laughs> he's just gonna stay the whole night and just yeah like... he's like one of those friends where you're like all right buddy let's get after it and he's like still sitting there and he's like getting comfortable <laughs> and you're like all right <laughs> well sick um, dude uh like subscribe comment do the stuff um yeah anything else i mean that was another fantastic episode of husker Ripe radio and folks they're only going to get better they're only going up from here just like anything you do you know and those of you who'd say yeah i remember episode one of husker Ripe radio i remember i remember episode seven yep i was there I was there. You can you can say that if you if you're tuning in now. And we'll leave it at that, folks. I'm Eddie Rosenthal. That's Aaron Warsfold. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Bleed red shit corn. Peace out. I love you guys.